Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Have you ever taken your lunch to work and go to put it into the refrigerator only to find that the refrigerator is packed full and there's no room for your lunch? Or there's science experiments going on in the fridge? Or you have an office mooch that steals your lunch out of the fridge? Nah, don't look at me. I didn't do it. <coughs> Nice try, Scooter. All you had to do is ask, and I would have shared my lunch with you. So when it does come time to eat your lunch, your lunch has been unrefrigerated for hours, or it's part of a science experiment, or the greedy knucklehead in the cubicle next to you ate your lunch. So if you worry throughout the day about your lunch being spoiled or stolen, it would be more practical and easy for lazy people like me to find a lunch that's shelf-stable and doesn't need to be refrigerated, and one that you can secure. Of course, you could just keep your lunch in your desk drawer. Or you can take out a second mortgage on your home and eat out every day. A better option might be to spend $2.24 and buy one of the 18 different Hormel Completes dinners that you could safely store in your desk drawer, backpack, purse, or even in your pocket. That way, when it's lunchtime, you're assured to have something safe to eat. Now I've tried and reviewed some of the Hormel Completes before and I've had mixed feelings. So today we're going to try a few more of the Hormel Completes meals again and see if they're any better than the ones I've tried before. So the first meal we're going to try is the 7.5 ounce Hormel Chili with Beans. Here's the ingredient list and I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed, even though it has TSF in it, textured soy flour. TSF is basically the same thing as TVP, textured vegetable protein, which if you didn't already know, are used as meat substitutes or used as a meat extender like in this chili, which basically means they can use less meat, which is obviously a money saver. And besides adding protein, it makes it appear that there's more meat and makes you feel like you're eating more meat. There's no better feeling than having a mouthful of meat. <laughs> Did you just try to make it funny? I did indeed try to make a funny scooter. It's nice to see you're paying attention. Like I said, this ingredient list is pretty impressive. There's no junk in it. Kudos to Hormel. The serving size is the whole seven and a half ounce container, which has 260 calories, nine grams of total fat, three grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 25 milligrams of cholesterol, 990 milligrams of sodium, 31 grams of carbohydrates, 7 grams of fiber, 4 grams of sugars, and 14 grams of protein. Other than the sodium in a 7.5 ounce meal, these numbers aren't bad. The instructions are as simple as you can get. You're supposed to vent the lid, but I wanted to show you, the people, what it looked like before we heated it up. So we pulled the film all the way back. And I'll be doggone, before the thing's heated up, it looks like a chocolate brownie. Yeah, oh, uh, I love brownies. I do too, Scooter. Finally, we agree on something. And then it went into the microwave for 60 seconds and then stood for one minute. And here's our Hormel chili with beans after microwaving on high for one minute and sitting for another minute. And it still looks like a chocolate brownie. But once Mrs. Wolf Pit started mixing it up, it smelled like chili but it looked more like slow cooked, thick and sticky baked beans, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but this is supposed to be chili, not baked beans. So we got a spoonful of the chili that looks like baked beans. And you guys know the deal, into the old pie hole and down the gullet it went. I've had Hormel chili before, and I remember it being decent, but it was watery and somewhat bland just the opposite of this version of their chili. This chili is much thicker and has a great flavor to it, but there's no spice, which is okay. You can always add more spice. And the bean to meat ratio definitely favors the beans, which is fine with me. I love beans. Beans are delicious and they provide entertainment. For the price, flavor, and good ingredients, I'm gonna give Hormel's chili an eight out of 10. I could picture having one of these in my desk drawer along with a couple saltine crackers and that would be a great lunch. 
I'm sure that you, the people, have already noticed that Mrs. Wolfpit and her beautiful nails are back. Did you miss them? If you've missed Mrs. Wolfpit and her nails, show her some love and hit that like button. Now for our second completes meal, we're going to try the 9 ounce Salisbury steak with sliced potatoes and a rich brown gravy. This meal weighs an ounce and a half more than the chili, but it's the same price. Here's the list of ingredients, and this is more like I expected. A whole bunch of fillers and additives. But I'll continue to try all these foods for you, the people, so you don't have to. The serving size is the whole tray, which has 300 calories, 17 grams of total fat, 7 grams of saturated fat, 1 gram of trans fat, 45 milligrams of cholesterol, 850 milligrams of sodium, 23 grams of carbohydrates, 3 grams of fiber, 2 grams of sugars, and 14 grams of protein. Here's our Salisbury steak meal right out of the box. And I definitely was not expecting a big piece of Salisbury steak like that. That's pretty impressive for a cheap meal. Now here's our Salisbury steak and potatoes after microwaving for 60 seconds and then resting for another minute. We mixed the gravy up with the potatoes. And speaking of the potatoes, I think it was a good move to use sliced potatoes versus mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes in the gravy would have caused this to be a soupy mess. And the potatoes aren't mushed like you think they would be. They still have some firmness and texture. And as you can see, the Salisbury steak isn't very thick but it's still a good sized portion for $2. And there's a good amount of potatoes and gravy. And it certainly had the aroma in the house smelling pretty good. And then I began to salivate like a rabid dog. So we cut off a piece of the Salisbury steak, scooped it up with the potatoes and the gravy. I was too hungry and salivating too much to try the ingredients by themselves, like I normally do. So into the old pie hole and down the gullet it went. And I'm really surprised to say but that was a mouthful of goodness. It's not a homemade Salisbury steak, but it's a delicious $2 Salisbury steak. The texture of the patty was tender, but firm. I was expecting it to be mushy like a sponge, like most processed meats are. And the flavor was rich and savory. I don't know if that was from the Salisbury steak or the gravy, but as we all know, gravy would make a turd taste good. So far, I've been surprised by both meals. They've both been pretty good, especially for only $2. And I'm going to give the Salisbury steak and potatoes another 8 out of 10. Now let's try the 9 ounce tender beef with mashed potatoes and brown gravy. Here's the list of ingredients, and it looks like a lot of ingredients, but they're actually sub-ingredients that are in the main ingredients. Yeah, I have a question. What are sub-ingredients? Good question, Scooter, and I'm glad you asked. Sub-ingredients are ingredients that are in another ingredient. For instance, there's Rochester sauce in this. All the ingredients after that that are in parentheses make up the Rochester sauce. And I think that's the case with the Salisbury steak as well. So they're not as many ingredients as I originally thought. The whole meal has 230 calories, eight grams of total fat, three grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 50 milligrams of cholesterol, 990 milligrams of sodium, 24 grams of carbohydrates, 1 gram of fiber, 2 grams of sugars, and 15 grams of protein. And that's still a little bit more sodium than I'd like to see in such a small meal, but considering some of the other meals, it's not that bad. Now here's our tender beef with mashed potatoes and gravy right out of the box. And at this point, it doesn't look very appealing. And it also looks very heavy on the mashed potatoes and a little light on the beef. But it's a $2 meal. What do you expect? So here it is after microwaving for 60 seconds and resting for another minute. So I got a spoonful of the beef and the gravy. And the gravy was good. It was rich and savory. However, the pieces of meat were somewhat gritty, kind of like an overcooked piece of liver. It wasn't too bad, but the texture could have been a little bit better. Next, we went in to try the mashed potatoes. And when we started digging into the mashed potatoes, I was shocked. They were somewhat dry and firm. 
which is actually a good thing. If you remember earlier in the video, the Salisbury steak, I said it was a good call to use sliced potatoes versus mashed potatoes because I thought the mashed potatoes and the gravy together would make like a gravy and potato soup, but I was wrong. The combination of the somewhat dry mashed potatoes and the rich savory gravy was a perfect combination whether it was meant to be or not. The potato to meat ratio definitely favored the potatoes, but that's a good thing because the potatoes were the star of this meal. I'm gonna have to give this tender beef, potatoes, and gravy meal a seven out of 10. Now for the last complete meal we're gonna try today is a seven and a half ounce macaroni and cheese, which is tender macaroni and a creamy cheese sauce. Here's a list of ingredients. The whole container of macaroni and cheese has 310 calories, 16 grams of total fat, 8 grams of saturated fat, a half a gram of trans fat, 40 milligrams of cholesterol, 740 milligrams of sodium, 28 grams of carbohydrates, 2 grams of fiber, 1 gram of sugars, and 14 grams of protein. Here's the complete macaroni and cheese before heating up. And here's the macaroni and cheese after heating up. Now before we dig into the macaroni and cheese, I gotta tell you, the people, that I'm not the biggest fan of macaroni and cheese. Mrs. Wolfpit, on the other hand, loves macaroni and cheese. She loves it so much that she considers it a vegetable. Yeah, I think a macaroni and cheese was a vegetable. Where can we buy a macaroni and cheese plant? It's not really a vegetable, Scooter. It was a joke. So I took a couple bites, and it's definitely on the soupy side, which I actually like. I'm not a big fan of the macaroni and cheese casseroles where you have to cut a piece out, but that's just me. The cheese sauce was nice and creamy, it had a good flavor, but you could tell it was a fake cheese flavor, which is okay because that's what it is. The noodles were al dente. I thought they would be mush, but this macaroni and cheese was overall pretty good, even for me, someone who's not a big macaroni and cheese fan. This macaroni and cheese reminds me of Stouffer's macaroni and cheese, and that's meant as a compliment. And one other thing, macaroni and cheese can sometimes be very salty. This wasn't salty at all. Even though I wouldn't buy this macaroni and cheese again, simply because I don't really like macaroni and cheese, I'll give it a score of 7 out of 10. A macaroni and cheese lover might give it a much higher score. But that's just my honest opinion. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.